So thank you everyone for uh, for joining us. We've got a pretty significant crowd for the first catapult session for for 2018. Uh, I call this this presentation drawings and uh, specifically battling with templates. Kind of a, a silly title, I understand that, uh, but the subject matter that I'm going to cover over the next 45 minutes to an hour seems to be a recurring theme. Questions, difficulties, issues, if you want to call them that, with templates seems to come up over and over and over uh, in my experience with talking with customers and supporting SolidWorks. For example, we had a call and support come in Tuesday on this particular topic. I was working with some customers before the holiday break, you know, at the end of 2017 on this, you know, exact same topic. So it's just, it's something that uh, comes up a lot. I like to talk about it, hopefully clear the air on some of these these behaviors that happen. Now, with that said, I, I am going to have a little bit of a disclaimer here. This topic can be slightly confusing. Um, there's several moving pieces that work together to make a SolidWorks drawing a SolidWorks drawing. So I will be jumping back and forth between a couple of different file formats. I'll be jumping in and out of Windows Explorer. I will do my best to go as slowly as possible so everybody can uh, can get everything that they need from it. So when I, when I say battling with templates, um, what am I going to cover? I'm going to start off with essentially the basics, the, um, the background happenings in SolidWorks when you click the button, make a new drawing from part or file new, click a drawing. I'll discuss drawing templates and sheet formats, how they're related, the differences between them, and when we kind of build the foundation of drawing templates versus sheet formats, we'll then get into different levels of customization, starting with very basics, just customizing a template, a sheet format, saving them, then taking a step further and discussing custom file properties and creating notes in our drawings that are linked to those properties, continuing on to utilizing the title block feature. One of the things that I've, I've noticed quite frequently with users in SOLIDWORKS drawings is many customers still manually fill in their title block area. Um, some of this can be automated, but on the flip side of that, you may still need the control to have the end user type in their name, for example, or today's date. So the title block field can, can help with that. When it comes to customizing the border, there's an automated way to do that now in SOLIDWORKS. And as I go through this presentation, you know, hopefully you pick up a few, few tips and tricks and hints through this process. I will say what I'm going to talk about is, you know, it's hopefully fairly known information, but based on the, uh, the difficulties that I have with it sometimes and the number of attendees, I think it's something we all, you know, as a collective SOLIDWORKS community kind of struggle with periodically. So let's get into this. Let's battle some templates. So has anybody ever seen this message? Now, typically when I give this presentation to a live audience, nearly everybody's hand goes up. Um, if your hand does not go up and you've never seen this message before, I would imagine somebody you know that uses SolidWorks probably has. Extremely common, and it can be also quite frustrating because the root cause of it sometimes isn't always known. Um, some drawings work great, and then all of a sudden you try to add a second sheet to a different drawing, and it doesn't work. We'll talk about this. Another, I'll say, manifestation of this subject matter is the example that I have up on screen. I've created an A-size drawing, or a template, excuse me. I've added the computer-aided technology logo. I've removed some text boxes that I don't need in this instance. And all I'm trying to do is add a second sheet to my drawing. So when I go through that process, my sheet number two doesn't match sheet number one. My logo disappears. Maybe those text boxes that I've deleted, I'll say magically, show back up. Maybe other things change that I wasn't anticipating. 
Once again, this is uh, something that I, I hear quite frequently that, that customers have to deal with. Usually these types of issues come up right towards the end of a deadline where you need to generate a drawing package for possibly a design review or, or whatever the situation is and you know you call support and might be a little bit frustrated at that time because you just need to get your job done. You don't need to be you know battling with templates and, and sheet formats. So I'm going to jump into SolidWorks here and, and take a look at this. So the file I have on screen is actually a drawing I pulled out of my, my archives. I created it a number of years ago. You can see I, I actually drew this back in 2013. And I was using it as an example, um, kind of teaching a lesson on drawings at the time. And very simply, I just wanted to right-click the sheet and add a sheet. And much to my surprise, I was presented with the sheet format could not be located error. Why does this happen? It's very frustrating, and that's what I want to talk about. Let's go ahead and, and get into these details about why these things are happening. What about the other example that I had up on the screen? I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this here. I don't actually want to create this, this second sheet, just using it for an example. But if I make a brand new drawing and I choose my customized, I've named it a custom drawing template, and there we can see just like those screenshots I had in the presentation, the logo's there, I've eliminated uh, the proprietary information for this example, but the same steps are all I want to take. Add a sheet. While I don't get an error message, I don't get the exact same sheet on sheet two. The logo disappears, the proprietary and confidential window or text field pops up, and we can see toggle to sheet one and toggle to sheet two. Now this, this issue, you know, typically manifests itself in these two, uh, these two situations. Very easy to replicate, and I think that's why uh, the frustration um, happens so frequently. So, drawing templates versus sheet formats, what is the difference and why do we sometimes struggle initially creating our SOLIDWORKS drawings? Well, I like to say it's because of file locations. There's a lot of situations in SOLIDWORKS that come up. Um, many times, file locations are the cause. So in this particular example, when we're talking about SOLIDWORKS drawings and we click the button, make a new drawing, there's actually two discrete files that work together to make our SOLIDWORKS drawings. The first file is the drawing template, and that's what we select when we click Drawing from File New and, and grab the template, a DRW DOT file. Now this template file for a drawing controls the size of the drawing. It controls every single document property. So if you need to customize ANSI or ISO standard or the units or significant digits or arrow sizes, you know, literally everything under tools, options, document properties, they can be saved into templates. You can also utilize layers. You can set up multiple sheets. If you would like to have your drawings always begin with a front, top, right view and an isometric view, you can set those up in predefined views. And finally, the drawing template has information about the sheet format. Now, the sheet format also is a separate file. It's a .sld DRT file, and that contains everything that is the title block and border the automatic uh, border function or a traditional border. Maybe you brought all this information in from uh, DWG file or DXF. Contains your title block, the notes, any logo that you would like to apply. They could be default notes, anchors to tables, bomb tables, cut list tables. Um, so quite a bit of information. Now what can sometimes be tricky about these two files working together is the drawing template can either have this sheet format internal to the file. So I like to use the analogy of the, the drawing template being a zip file. So this information in the SLD DRT file is, is internal, or it can be an external link. So it's looking to some other location on my computer 
or on my network to load my title block and border up. So two files, they work together to make a SOLIDWORKS drawing. So specifically, these file locations, there are two separate file locations you know, for the basic part of this presentation that you'll want to be aware of. These are default locations as, in the examples I'm showing, SOLIDWORKS 2018 is installed. I haven't made any customizations to anything. I'm trying to keep it as generic as I can. Um, but you can see that templates are stored by default in the C drive program data, SOLIDWORKS, and then I have SOLIDWORKS 28 uh, 20XX for the version number. That could be 2016, 2017, 2018. I'm sure we'll see it in 2019 and 2020 for future releases. And then subfolder templates. A very similar path for the sheet formats. Um, it differs after the SOLIDWORKS version slash language slash English slash sheet format. Once again, these are the, the default out of the box paths you may have these paths located differently on your computer. It's actually a good thing if you have these paths located a little bit differently. Now what makes this a bit more difficult is program data by default in Windows is hidden. So often the case when we start working with, with a customer to, to put all the pieces together, the end user cannot see these folders. So if you're not familiar with what I'm referring to here, my C drive, notice there is no program data. It should be right in this area. So under View, Show Hidden Items here, and now I have that light yellow program data folder. And now I can navigate through my Windows folder structure. Instead of doing that, I have a couple of shortcuts right here. So I've got a folder for the templates. You can see up above in the address bar, there's the address. So I like to think of these are extremely buried folder locations, extremely buried files that are quite necessary to get easy access to in my experience. So speaking of these file locations, being that they are, I'll say, buried inside of that program data SOLIDWORKS specific version folder, if you have the ability, you may want to consider moving these. Now the reason I'm saying that is as, as I'll switch back into SOLIDWORKS here briefly. This example here where my phone can't or my phone drawing cannot locate the, uh, the sheet format, if we look at the sheet properties, it's going to show us the current path that my drawing is looking for. So if I copy and paste this into a notepad, because it's really difficult to see in that small window, take a look at this path. See documents and settings. You guys can read the rest. But essentially, this file location was locked to version 2008. I probably haven't had an XP computer for three different hardware revisions that I've used, maybe even longer. So these file locations, by using the default SOLIDWORKS locations, they're version specific. And as you change versions of SOLIDWORKS, it's really common to have your drawings linked to a folder location that doesn't contain your SLD, DRT, or your sheet format files anymore. The same thing could happen with your templates. There's a number of other files that are locked in these version specific folders that as you go through the upgrade process, you know, your file locations can be sending, to, sending SOLIDWORKS to, I'll say, orphaned, uh, orphaned Windows folders. So a couple of these that might be beneficial, and I understand that not everybody can just on their own change their file locations, um, but the, the usual suspects, the, the main culprits here are your templates, your part in drawing and assembly templates. Your sheet format, those two are what I'll be talking primarily about here moving forward. The custom property files, the property.txt file, it's a plain text file that uh, gives you the list of custom properties. I'll show that in a few minutes. The library file that controls your symbols, the diameter symbol or whatever, um, whatever other symbols you may need. And I'm sure there are more um, file locations that could be redirected. 
And as you can see up on the screen, I just have a generic example on my local computer. Um, but when I'm working kind of in my native off-the-grid environment, I redirect everything to this SOLIDWORKS library. It's a static folder. It never changes on any SOLIDWORKS upgrade. So everything is looking in one place, and I don't have to worry about um, anything getting, getting messed up in that, in that regard. So let's get into this process. Let's generate some custom templates and custom sheet formats, because that's what I want to spend most of the time talking about for our time together today. So this is supposed to be simple. This is SOLIDWORKS. All I'm going to do is start a drawing, possibly modify some document properties, make some modifications to my, my sheet format or the title block and border, that SLD DRT file, and save a template. I want to reuse this information over and over and over. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. We'll explain why it doesn't work in a modified workflow that you can use so it will work for you. But this, these, these four steps, five steps here, are what I see used over and over and over with, uh, with SOLIDWORKS users. I've done it myself when I kind of forget the steps that I need to do. So we'll just simply make a new drawing. And we'll use the generic as installed drawing template. So this is the DRW DOT file. There you can see it on the tooltip path. And when we say OK, now SOLIDWORKS is calling up, or we have the opportunity to call up the sheet format file, the SLD DRT file. And I'll just choose that B landscape, for example, and we'll say OK to that. So that process are the two files, or selecting the two files to work together to create the drawing that you see on screen here. Let's go into the tools options real quick. Maybe we'll make a quick change to the document properties. Just want to double check my units. I'll switch from IPS to millimeters, gram, seconds. I do not need four decimal points for my millimeters. And maybe I'll switch my my duals up to inches and three decimal points. Quick change to image quality. But I would imagine every user that's connected to the webinar this morning is quite familiar with modifying the document property. So I'm not going to go into um, extreme detail with those modifications. The next step that I would like to do is right-click and edit the sheet format. And we'll make just a few um, easy to see modifications. Delete a few text boxes, delete a few notes, delete a few lines. Notice when I select that line, I get relationship callouts. Uh, the title block in a SOLIDWORKS drawing is nothing more than a sketch. If I actually go up to the hide show items and I turn on sketch relations, you'll see horizontals, verticals, coincidences, you know, all throughout my title block and border area. If you need to, you can actually dimension every single element of your SOLIDWORKS title block. You can very precisely position everything. You could then take those dimensions, right-click on them, and, and hide that particular uh, annotation. Don't see it too frequently, but it is functionality that's supported inside of SOLIDWORKS. So I've made a subtle modification to my sheet format. I would also like to put in my company logo. So we can do that through the Insert pull-down menu, select Picture. And then you'll go ahead and just navigate to the file that you would like to use. If you're familiar with Sketch Pictures, it uses the exact same interface, the exact same property manager on the left. So we'll just kind of eyeball exactly where it should go. Now, I'm not making any, I'll say, really significant or groundbreaking modifications. I just want to make a few very easy to see changes to differentiate defaults to a small level of customization. I'll bring my description note down, bring the title note down, and just make a few more changes. I just double clicked on that, that logo so I can make it a little bit smaller. That's how you can go back in and edit any image that you have in your SOLIDWORKS file. But that's really all I'm going to do. 
exit out of edit sheet format mode to get back to the top level sheet, and my modifications are done. So we'll go through the typical process of a file save as, change our save as type from a drawing over to a template, and give it a name. So there we can see the name that we'll, we'll say. If I could type, I'd be done. We'll just say B Landscape Custom, and then we'll save that. Now one thing that you're going to see me do is after I make a modification, I'm going to shut the file down. Just to be aware, as soon as you save a drawing as a template, if you look very at the very top of the SolidWorks window to the file name, it's actually not a drawing file that I'm working with anymore on the screen. It's a drawing template. And I've seen a number of users, myself included, kind of miss this little piece of information, start creating a drawing, and then I end up saving all of this unneeded data or unwanted data in my SolidWorks drawing, or excuse me, my SolidWorks template. So I always like to say, after you make some customizations to either your drawing template or your sheet format in this process, just close the file down, open it back up or start a new document, and then you can go ahead and, and follow through with your testing. So there's the B Landscape Custom that I just created. I just saved it. We'll open it up. It looks exactly like it did 15 seconds ago. But we'll right-click on Sheet 1 and we'll add a sheet because that's really where everything falls apart. We can create our drawings, generate our views, place our annotations, but all we're trying to do is add a second sheet and we get errors or, as you just saw in front of you, we get a second sheet that is not the same as the first sheet. Not a situation that we really want to uh, want to work in. So why doesn't that workflow work? The reason for that is all the modifications that I made to the sheet format, and granted it wasn't significant, I deleted a node, a couple of lines, and added an image, but those modifications are internal to the SolidWorks drawing template that I saved. It is not saved to the drive. So when I told SolidWorks add a second sheet, it didn't have that customized file to load, so it, as I like to joke, kind of run homes to mama and pulls up the default non-customized file. And you can see that if we switch back into SolidWorks and take a look at the file locations. So here's sheet number two, right-click properties. Once again, it's very difficult to see in this window, so I'll just copy and paste this into Notepad. There's the information for sheet number two. It's pulling that default B landscape out of the, once again, the default 2018 file locations. If we switch back over to sheet number one, let's activate that. Let's choose the properties. Yeah, it's actually referencing the same information. Even though it's visually different on the screen, it's referencing that B landscape. And if I hit reload, it'll actually pull that sheet format up from the drive and I'll lose all of my changes there. So you do want to be very, very careful about making these modifications to your sheet formats and keeping them internal to the drawing template. You can see that didn't work out too well for me. Now thankfully, there is a easy way to do this. It actually is pretty simple. There are two extra steps that, in my experience, are critical to make this process successful. Start the drawing, modify your document properties, modify your sheet format however you need to, and then save the sheet format from the file pull-down menu, save sheet format. A secondary, very critical step, often forgotten, is you set the link or set the sheet properties to link to this new file. Because if you don't, it's still going to revert back to that default piece of information. At that point, you save your templates. If you're like me, you typically tend to cross your fingers and hope that everything works. And then you go through the process of testing this. 
I say you probably won't save every setting the first time. I know I miss a lot of settings when I'm setting up some custom templates for customers and custom sheet formats. Uh, there's so many options you can change in the document po properties, it's, at least for me, almost impossible to get it right the first time. So jumping back into SolidWorks. I'll base everything off of my customized B landscape drawing. So I've loaded in that template at this point. It brings up that internal modified sheet format. The nice thing about the way that SOLIDWORKS works is even if you don't have it all set up right the first time, all is not lost. The data is inside the template. It is very easy to extract and save to a standalone sheet format file. All I need to do is say File, Save Sheet Format. It has its own special option within the File pull-down menu. And then redirect where you want SolidWorks to save this. In my example, everything's going to go to the default file locations. You can see there are a couple dozen SLD DRT files or sheet formats that come with SolidWorks. My recommendation, again, if you have the ability to do so, save your sheet formats to a static file location, either on your network or on your C drive or D drive or wherever it is, as long as it's not one of the file uh, locations that is version dependent, that is SOLIDWORKS controlled, it tends to work out much, much better. So we'll just call it B Landscape Custom 1. The underscores are not necessary, just a, a habit of mine. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that. And before we resave our template, we'll right click on Sheet 1, we'll select the Sheet Properties, and we're going to redefine this link right here by clicking Browse. And we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there is my B Landscape 1. Now just a side note, you'll see that the size of that file is considerably larger than the sheet format above and below it, the default B and the default C. And that's because I placed an image file in there. If you have a very, very large, high-resolution image file, if it's several megabytes, for example, that information is now embedded inside of the sheet format file, so your sheet format file is going to get very, very large as well. Typically doesn't cause a problem as images are fairly small, but just something to be aware of. So we'll go ahead and we'll open that up, apply the changes, and now we will resave the template. So I do realize that it appears that I'm, I begin to go in circles here because I honestly am going in circles of starting the file, making a few customizations, resaving it, closing it, and then doing some testing by reopening it. So I'm going to overwrite my existing B Landscape Custom, and we'll go ahead and we'll save that. Yes to replace it, and close and test. So I'll open that file back up. Everything looks good here, and fingers crossed, right-click Add a Sheet. It's exactly the same as sheet number one. So it's not significantly different, um, but it is very important to go through that file save sheet format step as well as set the sheet properties and link to this new file that you've just saved. So once we understand the fact that there are two files that work together, the relationship between those two files, and then more importantly, I'll say the mechanics of successfully modifying and saving those two files, we can start getting a bit deeper into the modification of our sheet format and start discussing utilizing SOLIDWORKS custom file properties and setting up notes that are linked to those SOLIDWORKS custom file properties. So I like to think of this as starting to place a little bit of automation into our SOLIDWORKS drawings. They're already highly automated to generate our views, to reference all of our model item dimensions. Let's leverage all of that rich data that our parts and our assemblies have 
and utilize as much as we can in, in the, uh, the notes area, in the annotations area, in our title block. So typically, this is all done with notes linking to properties, and a default SolidWorks sheet format already has a pretty significant number of properties that are predefined, or excuse me, notes that are predefined to properties. Some of them are what I would call SolidWorks special properties. They'll start with the prefix SW dash. They're going to be things that are essentially completely controlled by SolidWorks. A SolidWorks special property is the configuration name of a part or the mass of a part. You can't really change that. It's just calculated. Um, other properties that we'll see are the code of dollar sign PRP sheet, and that would be something I would consider a model custom property. You'll also see dollar sign PRP. That's going to be a, a, a note linked to a property in the current document or, in our example, the actual drawing file. Now, I don't expect you and I don't really believe it's necessary to place to memory, to memorize all of this prefix code that you're going to see inside of SolidWorks when we start generating these notes and in the tool tips. I'm just putting this up there because they're the most common that you'll see, and it tends to eventually come up, what does this mean versus what does that mean? I'm not going to spend an extremely long amount of time going into all the different properties that SolidWorks has. I've got a little link there or a path to the link to property area of the SolidWorks help where it's going to go into considerably more detail of all the different property categories that you can utilize and link to inside of SolidWorks. Um, but we'll take a look at a couple of these using default property notes that are already in the title block area as well as creating our own custom information. So in the example that I'm going to show, I'm going to be driving the notes from the model. Now, as this is the typical scenario that I see, it's not the only scenario, but it comes up quite frequently, um, when you have notes in the drawing that are driven by the model, it's likely you may need to model, or excuse me, modify your part templates. Typically, a discussion about sheet formats and drawing templates begins a discussion about custom properties and part templates. They all seem to go hand in hand. If you go through this process and you do some work and you do some testing, if you have a multi-sheet drawing, make sure you add the model to sheet number one. It doesn't work too well otherwise. I found that out the hard way. We'll also look at some options to automatically load a unique second sheet fairly common to have a highly detailed title block for sheet one and a simplified title block for sheet two. There's options inside of SOLIDWORKS to do that for you automatically, to load that, I'll say, simplified second sheet. So we'll go through all of this process and maybe show a couple of options that you weren't aware of or maybe you just haven't used in, in quite some time. So I'm going to continue to work with this one document. So I apologize for opening the same file over and over and over, but I'm trying to keep it as, as fluid as possible. So we'll open that B Landscape custom sheet format and template back up. We're going to right click, edit the sheet format here. And as we zoom in, you can see some of these, once again, very common notes. These are predefined in the default SOLIDWORKS drawings. The PRP sheet, you know, in brackets there, material. That's a note linked to the SOLIDWORKS model material properties, if it's there. Same is true with the sheet. Same is true with the description. And even though it appears to uh, go off the screen, we'll look at ways to manage those notes that might be a little bit larger. Some other notes down below, the scale, as I just put my tool tip over it, that's a local property PRP sheet scale to the drawing itself. The weight right here is actually kind of a combination note of text. If I double click on it there, text to the left of the cursor, linking to a property to the right of a cursor. Now there are many, many more that I could go through, but these are a few that are in a drawing by default. There are also a number of local properties or um, note links 
link to properties within the drawing for drawn, date, checked by, date, and the list continues. So we'll, we'll go through a couple of examples of utilizing the defaults and setting up one of our own. Now, in order to begin filling in everything that the title block could do out of the box for us, I need a file. So let me very quickly make a part, and you're, you're going to witness my, my amazing SOLIDWORKS modeling skills of just quickly putting in a, a block and, and drawing in a rectangle, and that's, that's all we're going to do here. And we'll just drop this up onto the desktop. And I'll just give it a name of a you know, part number here of 123-789. Now, before I go any further, let's talk about what we can do in the part model to help us over on the drawing side. So we'll go to the File pull-down menu, and we can either select the properties from this environment, so File Properties, or if you prefer, there is a Properties button now up on the little quick toolbar that will get you to the exact same location. And this will bring you into defining custom file properties for your part model. Also a place um, many, many users are quite familiar with. Now this drop-down list, notice there's, there's a unique one in there. I've created it myself. We'll talk about that here in a moment, how you can put your own notes in there. But where it begins description, these are the ones that come with SOLIDWORKS. So for a description, I could type in something that that is appropriate here. We'll just say it's our test block. Or you could leave it blank. Or you could put some X's to signify that the end user needs to fill it up. A lot of different companies handle these kind of default empty properties differently. Possibly another description I would like to add in here is the material. Now the material is something I see quite frequently typed in. You know, for example, I just typed in 6061 there. You don't need to do that. There's an easier way, and that's to use this little drop-down arrow and link it to one of, I'll say, SOLIDWORKS special property, material, mass, surface area, volume. You can see the rest of them that are listed there. So we'll go ahead and we'll link it to the material, and it's now linked to, I kind of jokingly say, the most common SOLIDWORKS material I see, and it's called not specified. So right now, I don't have a material defined in my part model, but we'll go ahead and we'll do that for testing purposes. Let's say OK for here. We'll go to our materials, right click, and I'll just choose one of my favorites of, of 6061T6. Now, as you're working with your model file, you're adding these notes in there. You may need to rebuild your file just to make sure that everything gets up to date and then everything is filled in, especially if it's linking to a SOLIDWORKS special property so it shows up in the evaluated area right there. So I'm going to go ahead and specify uh, a brand new property that's not in there. And I'm just going to call this my note. Replace my note with whatever you need as far as custom properties are concerned. And I'll just type in the expression. So really not usable information on the drawing, just to show where it's going to populate once I place this part into the drawing itself. So I'll rebuild it, I'll save it, tile the windows vertically, and uh, just take the part name and drag it and drop it. Maybe you're like me and you forgot that that automatically creates a three-view uh, three drawing for you. Kind of caught me by surprise. I don't do that quite frequently. But as I zoom in to the title block and border area, notice that, you know, that description field under title now says test block. The drawing number inherits the file name. The material is now specified. So these properties are in the drawings by default. They're just waiting for the information to come over with either a part model or an assembly model. What about my note that I've created. So let's go ahead and add that in there. We'll right click and we'll edit the sheet format. We'll go to the note command on the annotation tab. And instead of typing anything in, I'll just place it right about here. 
And over on the text format, and this button is very easy to miss, but on the top row here, I'll hesitate my mouse and wiggle it just a bit to bring back up the tooltip, there's an icon that says link to property. And this is where the connections happen. We'll go ahead and we'll link to property, and we're going to switch it from the current document, i.e. the drawing, over to the model that's found here. So you could choose a couple of different areas, the model specified in the sheet property, so the model for the overall drawing, or you could get very detailed and choose a specific component within an assembly or a specific component within a very specific drawing view. So you have many options when it comes to specifying where these property links are attached to. From the drop-down list, I'll see description. That's already filled in with test block material. We can see immediately to the left. But here's the one that I've created, test note. And you can see it says this is a custom note. So that's the piece of this puzzle to create notes that are linked to properties. Now, unfortunately, my note is a little bit too wide. So let me show you a trick instead of just doing it as we see up on the screen. So if you want your notes to automatically fill the space, just click and drag a window when you're creating the note, and that'll control the width. And then as you type or as the note's filled in, think of it as kind of an automated just return. The other thing you can do, if I escape out of that and I place the note, I can grab the little grips of the note and kind of fill in the note area that I want to use it. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this in there. We'll go back to the link to property. We'll choose the same note that we were working with just a couple minutes ago, my note. But you can see it now fits correctly. It doesn't overlay existing um, areas of my title block. Now, I could repeat this process as many times as I need to. You can see there the, uh, the note is still attached to the mouse, so I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit escape here and finish that one note out. Another quite common thing that I'll add, and I'll just place it over here in the left hand or lower left hand corner, is maybe a default set of notes. And maybe you want that default set of notes to have bullets. So I'll just type in some information here of, I guess I should start with line one. So we can go ahead and add those as many of those bullet points as we in there, we can also add in um, a number. Now, why am I showing this? Well, a question that I get quite a bit is how do you control this spacing? You know, that tab is pretty extreme. It's actually not located up here on the formatting toolbar. You right-click in the note, and you go to what is called the paragraph properties. And then the paragraph properties has some uh, – fairly obscure settings right here, and what you want to control is the indent and the indent increment. So the default indent is set to 10. I'm going to set it in half to 5, and we'll see when I hit preview, notice how it shifted line 1 to the left. So you can actually control everything about the bullets, the spacing, the indentation, just simply by setting your note right-clicking, and going to the paragraph properties. Now, I do need, because of the way that I've created it, I'll just go ahead and set these all independently. So selecting on each line and getting in there. So this is one of those cases where I like to say in SolidWorks, if, you, or if you're having a difficult time finding some functionality, um, pretty good idea to go ahead and hit that right mouse button and see what else is, uh, is located there. So there's my other kind of default note that I want to have on my, my title block and border here. So I think things are looking pretty good. I also mentioned that you can customize and you can save the um, table anchors. Don't see table anchors used that frequently anymore in SolidWorks. But if I expand the sheet format over in the left-hand drawing tree area, you'll see all the available anchors for all the other options within inside of SolidWorks. If I want to set the Bill of Materials anchor, I can right-click Set the Anchor, and then click on a point. And it'll reset the anchor 
right to the left of the A in the lower right-hand corner where the computer-aided technology logo is, is where I clicked. Maybe not the most clear process, but that's how you can set everything up. So I've made a few more customizations. I'm now ready to resave that sheet format, and if I need to, resave that drawing template. Before I do all of that, I am going to delete my drawing views. If you do not delete your drawing views and you save a template, they will be saved into your drawing template as empty views. So bear with me here. We'll do a real quick file save, uh, save sheet format, overwrite the existing. Even though I don't believe it's, an, it's a necessary step here, I always like to secondarily save that template because when I don't, um, I've lost some changes. And once again, we'll go ahead and go through the process of close it, reopen it, and continue that. Before we do that, though, I want to create a second customized sheet format. And I want to further simplify what I have up on the screen. So we'll go to Edit Sheet Format. And on uh, sheet number two, I will keep the default notes there. But I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate all this area right here. So I could just drag a very large crossing window from right to left, select all of these notes in this example, and hit delete. And oh, I made a mistake. I realized that I should have uh, done something a little bit different. So we can just fix our, our title block area with drawing in another line. Once again, the title blocks and border, or excuse me, the title block area of a SOLIDWORKS drawing, it is just a giant sketch. So this is what I want sheet number two to look like. So we'll exit out of that mode. We'll then say File, Save Sheet Format, and instead of this being named C, uh, or Custom 1, excuse me there, B Landscape Custom 1, we'll call it B Landscape Custom 2. Same type of process. Close it, test it, go, go through things. So it does take a little bit of, you know, initial work. You want to make sure that you kind of jot the steps down so you don't forget anything because it is very much, in my experience, order dependent. So one of the last times I'll open this drawing up, it loads sheet number one automatically. What I forgot to uh, set up when I saved the template was to auto load sheet number two, the unique sheet number two. And that's actually controlled with an options here, so tools, options, document, properties, it's under drawing sheets. And there's a checkbox to use a different sheet format and an independent browse option where you can then select the B landscape to or whatever your customized or simplified second sheet is representative of. So we'll go ahead and we'll say OK and make those changes. Because I changed a document property, I do need to make sure and save that template again. So you can see there are several moving pieces. There's a, many different places where you have to hit this selection box and save this file or save that file. And I think that's what leads to the frustration and why I kind of call this battling with templates. There's just so many different avenues and you've got to make sure that you dot your I's and cross your T's so everything works uh, the way that you intend it to work. So as we begin to get deeper into this customization process, some of the notes we may want them to be automatically filled in from the model. Some of these notes we want the end user to fill in easily right within the drawing itself. So SOLIDWORKS has a mechanism called the title block table. You can get to it when you're in edit sheet format mode. You create this, I'll say, interactive region to edit. Now the nice thing about using this title block table is they're not just simple notes. If they're notes that are linked to properties, they'll actually fill in the model properties for you. So if it's a drawing property, you'll see them uh, loaded in there. And if it's a model property, the model does have to be inserted into the drawing, but it will actually fill in the configuration-specific properties of the part model or the assembly model. So it really is a an easy to use but a powerful mechanism to start putting this, I'll say, manual data into your, your SOLIDWORKS drawings. 
So let me get in there real quick. So right-click Edit Sheet Format. You could get to it a couple of different ways. Right-click Title Block Fields. Um, they've also introduced in the last couple releases of SolidWorks, I think they put this in uh, 16 moving forward, the Sheet Format tab where we can go ahead and define the Title Block Fields. So when you define a Title Block Field, you can see this dark black border. That's basically an active zone that when the end user places their mouse in there, they can double click and begin editing the note or group of notes that you, you're giving them um, allowance to do so. So I'll just put in a couple here. We'll, we'll allow the end user to fill in their name, the date, and maybe we want somebody to come in and fill in who checked it and then the date that they checked it. I could continue to select as many notes as I see fit, but I'm just going to put those four notes in there for this, this example. And we'll say OK to that. I'll zoom to fit, exit out of uh, edit sheet format mode, back to edit sheet mode. And yes, I am sounding like a broken record, but we made a change to the sheet format. We need to save that sheet format. If nothing else, um, I'm kind of uh, reiterating myself here. You'll at least learn the file save sheet format function over and over and over. You'll need to go there. Now I'm just going to resave over B landscape custom one. If I needed to do this on the second sheet, I could go ahead and do that as well. Just so we can see how this works, we'll tile vertically. We'll drag and drop our drawing view in there. And when I zoom into this area, you can see when I move my mouse in there, there's that dashed orange region around there. That's the border of the activation zone. And when I double click in there, those fields that have been selected are now presented to the end user. So we can go ahead. I'll just put my name in there and today's date. And we'll say OK to that. So I am manually typing this data in, but it's being applied to the drawings options, or excuse me, the drawings properties. I just click the little file properties button right there, and there we can see drawn by. I just type that in there, the drawn date. I just type that in there as well. So it's more than just manually typing in a note. It's a note that's also linked to a property, and you can go ahead and manage that data in that manner. Don't see it used too frequently. Every once in a while it will come up. So I just like to touch on some things that maybe not everyone is aware of you can do inside of SolidWorks. Another option that you have when it comes to customizing your sheet formats here is the automatic border command. So that was introduced a couple of releases ago in 2016, and this allows you to control everything. It's an automated way of setting up zones and margins and thicknesses and fonts and dividers. The nice thing about this, this automatic border is the zone area is automatically tied, or the zone sizes, excuse me, are automatically tied to the zone parameters within the sheet properties, and I'll show that here in just a moment. All this information, once again, is saved to the sheet format, so as we make these modifications, we'll We'll need to go back through the steps of resaving uh, that B Landscape custom sheet format. So I'll delete all my drawing views again. Right-click Edit Sheet Format, and I'm just going over to the, uh, the drawing tree, another way to get there. And we'll see up on the Sheet Format tab is the automatic border. Now, there's some really good things about this automatic border. One, it's automatic. Um, the not so good things is if you have read in maybe a DWG file or a DXF file, or if you're using an older SolidWorks drawing sheet format that doesn't have this integrated automatic border functionality within it, you do have to delete the existing entities in there that you don't want. So just be aware of that. It's very powerful and very useful moving forward, but maybe for legacy drawings, you wouldn't want to convert everything over to use this. This is a native SOLIDWORKS 2018 sheet format, so there's nothing that I need to delete. 
but I can start setting a few pieces of information up. I can increase the number of rows. I can increase the columns. And you can see it's all updates in real time up on the screen. You can, if need be, you can just dynamically drag the borders around, the margins, excuse me. You can type in whatever value you need for the left border, right border, top border, bottom border, full control over the thicknesses of the lines, the line styles. You know, familiar functionality in other areas of SolidWorks uses the same type of behavior, but now you can go ahead and easily set up your, your borders there. Double line border, just a tick box. If, uh, if notes are a little bit off, well, you can go ahead and just use this, this offset option down here at the bottom, this distance. And you can see as I, I adjust it, everything gets centered nicely between the two uh, parallel border lines. So if you're not aware with it, you know, you can definitely take a look, utilize it. Maybe it's something that's popped up when you've started a new drawing in 2016, 17, or 18, and you weren't quite sure why the drawing border looked uh, the way that it looked, and that's because of the new automatic or new in 2016 automatic border. So I've increased to six horizontal rows, four vertical rows by changing the zones. As we right-click and look at the sheet properties and go to zone parameters, it's all tied together. You can see it's, it's one and the same. So if you're, you are using the drawing zone functionality inside of SolidWorks and you make changes to the automatic border, you don't need to double-check these settings right there. It's just a different way to get there. So yet again, the next step, save that sheet format does become a little bit redundant here, so I'll speed through some of these additional saves. If you need to, resave that template. Make sure you establish a link to a modified sheet format if, if you need to. So as we're getting towards the, uh, the end of our time together, I would like to spend just a few moments talking about how do you use your customized sheet formats. The great thing about saving a sheet format from inside the template to a separate SLD DRT file is one, you've got a backup of that file. So it could be, you know, you could be part of your backup uh, routine. But two, when it's a separate file, you can reuse that title block and border with any existing SolidWorks drawing. So if you need to make a sweeping change and add a different logo, to your company or whatever the case is, it's fairly easy to do so. Now, one piece of functionality that was brought into SOLIDWORKS 2017 is the Select Sheets to Modify option. And this allows you, I'll say, to bulk replace all of the sheet formats in a drawing if it's um, appropriate to do so. So I just want to show you that real quick to see how that works. So we'll close this kind of test drawing down. I'll even close my part model down. And I'll go select an old drawing that I have that has none of the customizations in it. It's not a huge drawing. It's a five-sheet uh, five drawing. Um, but it's definitely not something that I would want to replace every single sheet format one at a time. And I know a lot of our customers have 10, 20, 50 sheet drawings. And if you need to do a a wide change, you don't want to have to do it one sheet at a time. And that's where this new, uh, new functionality comes into play. So I'm going to launch it from sheet one. And maybe before I do that, I'll just cycle through. You can see no logos. They're all B-size landscape, just the generic out of the box that we have with SolidWorks in this example 2018. So we'll right-click properties. We'll browse to a new sheet format. So this is how you could load in a different size, load in a different level of customization. And we'll go ahead and we'll say, um, choose that right there. And it's very easy to miss, but here it is. Select Sheets to Modify. It'll bring out this pop-out to the right. You could select where it says Sheet. That will choose every single sheet in your drawing. If you do not want to replace all the sheets, you can individually select 
which sheets to update and which sheets to use, you know, as the default. So in this example, I'll update for some reason sheets 1, 3, and 5. We'll say OK. We'll apply the changes. Say yes to update all of the notes. And we can see there's my kind of placeholder line 1, 2, and 3 note on the left. There we can see the logo that's popped in right there. Unfortunately, my assembly does not have access or does not have the note named, air quotes, my note, so it doesn't get filled in right here. Sheet 2 is going to be the same. Sheet 3 is going to be updated with the lines 1, 2, and 3 logo information in there, and same as Sheet 5. So SOLIDWORKS has definitely made it easier with SOLIDWORKS 2017 and now with 2018, I'll say, to deploy uh, large changes to the, to the sheet formats using the select sheet format functionality. So to kind of recap where, where we started and, and where we've ended up here, we started with a very kind of basic discussion about what happens behind the scenes when we say file new, you know, making a drawing discuss the uh, kind of similarities but the differences between the two file formats that work together to make a drawing, a drawing template and a sheet format, the differences as far as what they contain that information, showed a initially a broken way, I'll call it that, of saving a template in sheet format, but then a modified workflow that does allow you to successfully modify and save both your sheet formats and creating those links within the templates, beginning a little bit of automation with setting up some notes linking to properties, showing the existing notes that are in a default SOLIDWORKS drawing, and kind of wrapping things up here at the end with some manual options of how to define title blocks, touching on the automatic border, and then I think something that is going to be quite useful is that deploying the sheet formats through the um, select sheets to modify. So with that, the last, the last slide I have for you is just kind of the bullet points that I have as far as the steps that I've found that work for successfully customizing and saving the sheet formats and the templates. And go ahead and jot down my email address. If anybody does have any questions, you know, please send them in. I appreciate all the attendees. I, I appreciate the, uh, the enthusiasm for this topic. And if you have any comments about it, send them in as well. If you have any, anything that you do that you found is, is helpful in your work environment um, in this subject of you know, templates and sheet formats and this kind of struggle tug of war that we have to do and, and you want to share it, I'm, I'm always very open to new ideas on, on how, you know, all of us in the larger SOLIDWORKS community handle these. So um, that's what I have. Thank you very, very much. And uh, enjoy the rest of everyone's afternoon.